Hi everyone, today we'll learn how to do laminar flow analysis in ComSol Multiphysix. So when you open ComSol, you will get an interface like this. Here you have two options, model wizard and blank model. For uh, this time we'll select model wizard. So we want a 3D dimensional object. So we'll select 3D and here we'll have to select the domain of our study. So we'll have fluid flow. From here we'll have single phase and we'll select laminar flow and we'll add. Next up we have to select what kind of study do we want. So we'll click on study and from here we'll select stationary and we'll click on done. So stationary means that uh, properties of the system won't change with time for a particular point. So here you have geometry. So Comson Multiphysics is a finite volume software and we have to model the volume of the fluid that will be flowing, not the pipe. So I'll change the dimension and set it to millimeter. And I'll just take a simple geometry because this is laminar flow and it's not very common everywhere. So I'll take a cylinder, I'll set the radius to 25 and let's take the height to 300 and let's build so we'll have to click on build selected so here you see a uh, cylinder is created so yeah, let's change the radius to 12.5 i don't want 25 yeah now it's okay so our radius becomes 25 not uh, sorry our diameter becomes 25 not I don't want the radius to be 25 so for laminar flow it's generally that the the smaller the radius the better you can capture laminar flow so you can try to even with 10 it will be better for the timing I'll just select this so once you are done with geometry you'll go on to materials so materials you have to add a fluid so I'll s uh, search uh, water here we'll search and see what comes up So the search is complete here, we'll find liquids and gases and it will go to liquids, you'll find water and then you have to click on add to component. See once you add to component you can see it's got a color and that indicates that the material is successfully added. We'll just exit out of this and here you can also see the properties of the material are automatically filled in, you don't have to worry about it. So let's go on to the study sorry let's go on to the domain of our study so as we know our domain is laminar flow and uh, a parameter that determines whether a flow is laminar or not is Reynolds number so Reynolds number we know its uh, physical significance its uh, ratio of inertial force and viscous force so if we find a uh, viscous force to be higher the flow will generally be laminar and if we find inertial force to be higher then we will flow uh, find the flow to be turbulent so let's check fluid properties if it has got it correct or not so here you can see the density and diamond uh, sorry dynamic viscosity here it says that you will uh, directly get the value from the material here you can also select user defined but no need to do that and if you change the temperature here the properties will be auto adjusted to the temperature as well so that's a good thing so we have added water i mean the material to our system so one thing that we can notice here so let's go to the wall here so it will make it clear we'll uh, see that every 
part every part of the boundary it's given as a wall but since we are modeling a part of a pipeline so not everything means every part cannot be a wall there has to be an inlet and there has to be an outlet for the flow to continue so let's add that first and also one thing to notice here that you can see the boundary conditions in wall which is no slip set to no slip which follows our no slip condition in fluid mechanics so let's add uh, if we go to laminar flow and uh, right click we'll find inlet and let me add outlet as well uh, i will go to outlet and it will pop up pop in here so if i select inlet see there are properties like what would be the boundary condition so for finite element analysis one thing we have to understand is that it only works if our model is successfully constrained so for it to be successfully constrained what we need to have is proper boundary conditions except that it uh, won't give any result it will go uh, go on an infinite loop and it will terminate and means it will give no uh, solution so we have selected inlet so which part we want to select as inlet we have to tell that see if i click on here it will take this surface as the inlet so and in inlet what we are, what i want as uh, boundary condition that can be selected from here so i want laminar inflow so here in laminar inflow i'll select average velocity and i'll keep the average velocity to 0.05 so i'll give the properties of water at this temperature in the description below and here uh, there you can find out whether this velocity falls in the laminar region after calculating reynolds number so that's the task for you now let's go on to outlet and for outlet i just want it to discharge to atmosphere so i won't give any conditions there but i have to select which one is the outlet so i'll select the opposite end as the outlet so now if i go to wall see th this will number three and number four gives what overridden which means it is successfully constrained now so now let's move on to mesh so one interesting feature about console which i find actually very helpful is that the mesh that will be created it all uh, it is physics controlled i don't have to put any dimension of geometrical uh, means geometrical shapes that will be used for making meshes so here you can see you can directly uh, give the element size uh, if i select extremely fine it will take a long time i don't want to do that now i'll just select normal so that i can demonstrate how it works i'll click on build on and you will see the progress here let me zoom at the edge i'll understand the meshing better here ah mesh is created finally so let me zoom in more ah so you can see the geometrical shapes that are being used here it composes mainly of triangles only and since it physics control we don't have to care about its dimensions and that's a good point very good thing in console so now the final step is study so we have to just click on study everything is preset we have to do nothing here i don't recommend you to even do nothing uh, means nothing additional here and just click on compute so now we'll see see the progress has started our computation has started in the messages section you'll find some attributes about this mesh and in progress you'll find the equations that are being solved so if you want to check out this thing so you can double click on it and you can check it right there and logs you will find if there is any error so you will get it in logs so you'll also get the errors in messages as well so here you can see the number of degrees of freedom that will be solved for see so much so it will take a lot of time there's so many boundaries and edges 
so as you can see two convergence plots are generated both of which depicts nothing but error with iteration number so what how is this significant is that in uh, finite element analysis we generally assume a solution and then um, assuming that solution we find an error and the main uh, approach of finding the real solution of the equation is to make that error to zero so see here you can see the error is going down it will never be zero but it will be so small that in 10 to the power minus 9 order or 10 to the power minus 12 order that it will be considered as zero so here you can see the results are finally here i'll just zoom to extends yeah so i'll tell you what this means just check here ah, it's all okay so so as you can see this results bar has been created new and it has came automatically i didn't do anything so uh here you'll get a velocity plot and these are the plots that will get by default you don't have to do any extra work to uh, get this kind of plots so here you can when you click on velocity you will get a something called slice so see from here you can see from where it is getting the data from the parent or the solution and what it is plotting is spf dot u u stands for velocity and you can also see the units here so here they have plotted nothing but a plane so i'll just five planes it is very complicated so i'll take the mid plane only so let us keep the number of planes to one and let's make it interactive and let's click on plot so you see what we get is a mid plane on the fluid volume so one thing you need to understand that for any fluid flow there will be no slip and what no slip means at the boundary edges the fluid flow velocity will be zero so from the color legend you can easily understand our analysis is correct because we got at the edges we uh, got everywhere see everywhere let me zoom to it see everywhere we have got it blue on the edges which means that our analysis is correct and no slip condition has prevailed so let's make this one uh, interactive then you will understand what it means by that see if i increase this the plane moves and that is a very good thing you can uh, analyze the uh, velocity magnitude at every plane for the timing we for a laminar flow analysis and for fluid we generally need in the what we could say is that the mid plane only because it is better to understand here so as we can as we know that the fluid velocity is maximum at its center so here from the color legend you can also see that it is maximum at the center i'll make another representation so that you can understand better this thing so here we'll get uh, means the types of representation only what color you want to use you want a rainbow or a wave see it will change here uh, you don't need to bother about these things much I'll just select it to rainbow only so one good thing as well I want to say here is this if you go to velocity and cl uh, click on color legend here and click on means tick on this checkbox so show maximum and minimum values see here you'll get what is the maximum velocity and what is the minimum velocity minimum velocity will always be zero and here also get another plot this one is also auto generated which is the pressure plot so one thing you have to understand here so fluid flows generally from a higher pressure to a lower pressure or to be very fair from a higher energy point to a lower energy point by Bernoulli's theorem so for uh, here our analysis is restricted just to pressure and velocity only because datum is same and uh, since it's laminar velocity remains constant everywhere so our main thing is pressure 
so if I go to inlet see this one is the inlet and let me go to outlet see the opposite side is outlet and let me again go to that pressure plot see the pressure is maximum in this side and the lowest in this side and zero here doesn't mean that pressure is zero it means that it has been discharged to the atmosphere the zero uh, means here uh, means denotes the uh, what we call the gauge pressure not the absolute pressure so one thing we can say that we have analyzed it correct why because fluid always flows from higher pressure to lower pressure and see I told this one is the inlet I will click on it again see this one is inlet and I click on pressure plot this one has higher pressure and this one has lower pressure so analysis is correct let's move on to something else now let us create two things why it is required I'll tell in later one I'll tell later so I'll create a 2d plot group from results bar and also from if I click on uh, right click on this right sets I'll get something called cut plane so now what is a cut plane cut plane is something that you uh, means a plane that you make by cutting a surface so what surface I want to cut let me see here so let me just plot what if plots I'll just see here see it generally plots the mid plane only which we have selected but I don't want a mid plane like here I want a, a transverse plane so what will be the tra transverse plane here it will be an xy plane and let us put the z coordinate at 150 mm so I click on plot and see what happens see I told you I want a transverse plane I and I plotted the transverse plane at the mid at the mid length of the pipe so what will this give us is the velocity profile or the pressure profile across this cross section you can also add parallel uh, planes here from here you can go to add distance and it will create a pattern of planes that's not required for now so and one more thing I created is that 2d plot row how would I use this 2d plot row so see if I right click on this 2d plot group I'll get I'll get something called surface so from surface if I see here its uh, expression is already uh, in uh, u that means in uh, velocity if you want to change it you can also change it to pressure for the timing we'll just use uh, velocity only so I've selected uh, surface from but from where do we want the surface to be we want the surface to be at the cut plane one that we have done already so what this will do this will plot the graph of the transverse plane that we have selected so let's see what happened so what we have got here is a sun like structure you can say so this is just the transverse plane that we have plotted the velocity magnitude here and this what uh, gives you uh, an idea about so the velocity profile of each and every plane so if you want to generate planes like for at the entry at the exit you will get different velocity profiles there and here you can also see that the no slip condition has prevailed because at the edge the velocity is zero and where you get the maximum value straight at the center so this was all about how you generate or how you analyze laminar flow in console in the next video we will see how we analyze turbulent flow in console so goodbye